In our last tutorial, we got a GraphQL server spun up and responding to the simplest of queries. Today we're going to continue working with queries, but we're going to show how they can be more advanced, and how they can work with data on the server end. You'll need the entire Node.js app, all one file of it, from the previous tutorial to continue, so make sure you have that set up. Once you do, open index.js and let's get started. First we need to simulate some data. We don't have the time or space here to get into setting up a MongoDB or MySQL instance and then querying it with Express. Want to learn how to do that? I have a free tutorial that goes through all of it, which you can find on closebrace.com. Instead, let's create some fake data and pretend we got it from the DB. Ready? Below the three requires at the top, add this code. That's a simple set of users, nothing special. But we're going to be able to query it in multiple different ways with GraphQL. To do that, we're going to need to add to our schema and then establish some new resolvers. Start with the schema and make it look like this. Do you see what we've added? Where once there was only the query definition with the get welcome resolver, we've now added two new resolver definitions. Get user will take an integer from its ID parameter, the exclamation point means it's required, and return a user object, which we've defined just above. The get users resolver will take an array of integers, again required, and return an array of user objects. You'll note there are no commas or semicolons anywhere here. Also, when forming GraphQL queries, which we'll be doing later, you can only use double quotes, not single. This is because Facebook decided to design the language to annoy the crap out of me specifically. Anyway, we have our schema, so let's add our resolvers. Change your root variable to look like this. As you can see, we've built two new resolvers. GraphQL sends parameters as objects, which we're calling args in our function. We destructure what we need from those args and then run some functionality to return the data that the schema tells us we should receive, specifically a user object for get user and an array of user objects for get users. We don't need to write any more code. Since we added these resolvers as part of the root object, it's already being sent to express, down here. They should be ready to go. Save this file, and fire up your node server with nodemon npm start if you haven't already. I have, and as you can see, it restarted by itself. Then head to localhost port 4000 slash graphql. As you can see, we're pretty much where we left off. We're going to use the GUI to do some more testing. So starting with what we did last time, we have the get welcome query, which returns the get welcome data. That all still works as expected, returning a data object with the name of the resolver and the string it returns. Excellent. Now, to that, let's add get user. But let's start out by causing an error. Here's the code. Oh, if you're not getting autocomplete, refresh. You can see now it's autocompleting and there's our error. This is causing GraphQL to complain because it's expecting an ID parameter but not receiving one. So let's change that. Run it again. Womp womp. Still an error. Why? Because GraphQL needs to know what data with which to populate our user object. We're not telling it what fields we want. Remember how we talked about this being one of the best aspects of GraphQL? Well, it's also a mandatory aspect of GraphQL. Let's just get the user's name, shall we? Try this. There we go. Now we can see that our user object contains just the name Leslie Smith. We could add ID and age in there if we want, and I encourage you to experiment with doing so. Just remember, don't use any commas. In the meantime, let's roll forth with get users, like this. And let's see that output. That's the good stuff. We're getting the data we want, in the order we want, without having to do a filter on the front end once it's returned. Nice. 
Next time, we're going to take a quick look at sending data via mutations. Catch you then. Thank you.